YouTube battle community, Temptations fans, random people on the internet, my name is Giggins, and we are here today to talk about a late 70s album from the Temptations, Temptations Bareback. That's what it's called. That's just the name of the album. So, uh, I really, first, right off the bat, I really, really enjoyed this album. This album has caught a lot of flack over the years. Um, basically, anything that wasn't released in the 60s has caught a lot of flack. Um, I think it's time, or has been, or long overdue, to really give The Temptations output after 1973 a much more solid appreciation, and I'd like to start with this one. So, um, long story short, in the mid-70s, they were having a really hard time trying to make it on the pop charts, and you know, R&B charts, anything. Um, it just wasn't clicking with the audience. They were having a real hard time connecting with an audience. And this is a group that had gigantic singles in the 60s. They were a force to be reckoned with. One of the best bands in the world in the 60s. And all of a sudden, here they were like in a major dry spell. So they were like, you know what? I don't think Motown's doing what they can do for us. We're going to go jump ship. So they left Motown, which is like the unthinkable. And they went over to Atlantic Records. They did two albums there. One was called Here to Tempt You, and then this one, Bareback. Um, Here to Tempt You had a, kind of like a bubbling success, but not really much of anything. And they were kind of dissatisfied with that album as a whole. They ended up coming into the recording process with all these songs basically done. And they just kind of like put their vocals on top. It had very little input on the rest of the record. Um, and then with this one... Um, they had much more input. They reunited with Eddie and Brian Holland, uh, the songwriters from the Motown days, and they, it made for a much more enjoyable album. And um, you know, there's been there's been a handful of changes in personnel at this point. I mean, at this point, Dennis had left uh, for the first time. He was he was out doing his own solo. He was trying to do a solo thing at this point. Um, so they got Lewis Price and Glenn Leonard was still here. And Richard Street had been in the band for about at this point about seven years now. Um, Filling in to replace Paul, uh, not filling in, but he replaced Paul Williams in the early 70s. But So it's a different band. You can't even compare this to the temptations of I Can't Get Next to You or My Girl or any of that stuff because it's a whole different group of guys. I mean, Melvin and Notice are still there, but like the blend, the harmony, the times, the music, the songs picked out, the whole thing is a different situation. So you can't compare it to what was going on in the 60s. It just doesn't work that way. It's easy to do, and if you do it, you might be just super unsatisfied with the results because you're expecting David Ruffin and Eddie Kendricks and Paul Williams to be here too, but they're not. Um, you got some really great voices with Glenn Leonard and Lewis Price and Richard Street, and of course Melvin and Otis, like the two original guys. So like, you you still have that feel there. I mean, obviously the magic of the early days is a different magic than what was here, and the Temptations had so many different incarnations of the band up to this day. They just put out a new album like last month at the time that I'm filming this video. Um, so, my my tirade off the bat there. Um, let's just jump into this thing. So this thing really did not chart too well. Um, the album itself, I think, hit number 46 in the R&B charts. There were two singles from this, Bareback and the song Easy to Love, or um, Everybody Love, I'm sorry. Um, and they kind of had like a, a bubbling success, you know, number 42, number 31, respectively, uh, on the charts. So not terrible it had some play um but ultimately as a result temptations were kind of like you know what i don't think this is working out and so they went back to motown and had a, a reunion with a bunch of the guys and did the power album and a really big single with that song so things worked out for them after that but this album i think is one of their best albums hands down not even just of any era or just the 70s i think it's just a great album it's a lot of fun there's really, really tight playing on this thing, uh, and the vocals are just top-notch, as you would suspect with a Temptations album. So, um, this came out in 1978. I cannot find the exact date anywhere. I've been, whatever the word is for crawling through the internet, uh, looking for a date. But this happens to be a promo copy with the stamp up there, so it sounds really good. Um, but let's get into this thing. So, Mystic Woman is the first track in this thing. It just, like, puts you right into this, like, funky disco groove. Um, very exciting sharp horn arrangements throughout this thing. Nice disco shuffle beat in the drums. Um, 
And I really like the new voices, like hearing uh, Glenn Leonard on most of this song as the lead vocalist. He does a great job. Like, it's really fun to hear his voice. He, he just blends really well with this music. And, of course, the guys doing the background vocals just have that magic spark to them as well. Um, you can just tell they're really feeling this song. They're having a great time. They're having fun. It's an exciting track, and it gets you sucked into that vibe of, like, yeah, we're all in this together having a good time here. Um, I really love how the track shows off the percussion throughout this thing. But the vocals are just so strong. They are so tight and controlled and so practiced. Temptations, man. Um, I Just Don't Know How to Let You Go is the next song. And um, I love the clean, funky guitars in this one, the hi-hat shuffle. Um, but I really, really like the group vocals on this one a lot. Um, I, how this track was not a single blows my mind. It's such a great track. There's so many solos that are out here from the guys taking turns. It's mostly Lewis and Richard on this thing, um, but it's just a, a really sweeping, soulful track. I mean, it's just a fun track. Uh, That's When You Need Love. This sort of sounds like Midnight Train to Georgia um, with like the woohoo bits in the background. Um, but I love um, the solo by Lewis Price on this one. Uh, the tambourine touches are really cool, and it's just got a nice swing to it. Um, the group does amazing background vocals throughout this thing, and I love the, the sound that they have because it sounds so youthful. For a bunch of guys that were probably in their 30s at this point, they sound really youthful. Um, I love the bass lines on this thing, but the, you know, the, the bass on this album is absolutely incredible, but the vocals are just so passionately sung. Um, it sounds like it's a group of guys completely reinvigorated, like re rejuvenated, just like ready to tackle the world and feel like they're on top again. Um, this whole album feels like that. And then you get Bareback, which musically reminds me a lot of Going Places by the Jacksons. I get a lot of that feel. It's got that same sort of steady rhythm to it. Um, but the, the group vocal on this thing is just unbelievable. And the title just doesn't get more obvious or straightforward than that. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. But I really love the groove on this thing. The horns are on it are amazing. The drums are super lively. Um, the fade out keeps the vibe going. Very, very fun song. There's a couple of videos of them online doing this live, um, wearing some really great suits. But um, awesome song. I can see how it's kind of like I would have, I would have charted this thing higher back in the day. I think it hit like number 42 on the R&B charts. This could have easily been a top 20 song. Um, I think they just didn't have enough promotion behind them. But great song nonetheless. Ever Ready Love is a fantastic track, and it closes off side one. And for me, this is the most Motown-esque song on here. Um, Glenn Leonard does the lead on this one. And it just sounds like an Eddie Kendrick song. I mean, it just sounds sweeping with the great strings. Um, everything is so eloquently sung on this one. There's just a lot of love beyond, behind the whole track. It's an excellent performance overall, but it definitely um, has moments of that Motown, especially where Melvin comes in and does a couple of bits here and there um, with his really nice deep voice. Um, it's just a throwback, but I really, really enjoy it, and it fits really well sequencing on this thing. But it's a great song. Uh, this was a single, too. Hit number 31. Um, so not a bad showing for that one, but I would have placed that way higher, too. Uh, track 1 on side 2, Wake Up To Me. Um, this is really cool. It starts off with like a mysterious, kind of curious sound um, with some really delicate strings, and then it just jumps right into this disco-esque groove. Uh, that, that walking bass on this thing is so funky. I love that feel. Um, you know, playing over all the melody. But the chorus is so fun. The combination of minor and major keys are great. Um, the group vocal moments are just pure magic on this song. It's the, what they can accomplish vocally on this one is just awesome. Um, they were just so tight together. And um, you can tell they just practiced. They just rehearsed. They knew each other's parts and they just did it so well. Um, this could have been a single too, for sure. You're so easy to love. Here we go. Melvin comes in. So this track kind of blends out of the other one. And Melvin just does this monologue, and it's just like, gets the heart pumping, man. He's got such an awesome voice, that, that deep low bass. But then he goes places with his voice he doesn't normally go. He kind of goes up a little bit higher and kind of stretches out a little bit, which is really fun to hear him do, um, to see how versatile he was just beyond the bass. Um, so very, very cool to hear that. Um, and the background vocals are just nonstop throughout this track from all the guys. They're really, really smooth, really tight. Um... I See My Child is just a really sad song about divorce um, with a lot of heart behind it and a very rare solo from Otis Williams. So very cool Otis gets a solo on this thing. I love it. Just a really heavy song, but it's um, 
it's nice to hear Otis do a song. And then Touch Me Again ends this thing. Some really pretty amazing horns on this thing. It's just a really heavy horn song. Um, great piano touches. I love the bongos. I love the solo uh, vocal bits happening throughout this thing. It's just a real funky way to end this album. Um, real fun way to end this thing. It's got a great energy. Um, and I keep saying there's great vocals from the guys, but there just are great vocals from the guys. Um, so yeah, here's, here's the, if you like the front cover, you'll really like the back cover. Just a bunch of dudes hanging out with their shirts off, having a good time, bareback. Temptations on Atlantic. <laughs> so here's the, uh, the inner sleeve. So you actually get the words, which is pretty cool. And you got a great picture of the guys from that time. I think they were in jumpsuits. No, they're just wearing shirts. Just hanging out, looking cool. Um, and you got the, I, I, I've always been a sucker for this moat, this um, Atlantic label. That thing always just looks so cool. But um, really, really just love that. So yeah, overall, I mean, this really is a great album by this group. Um, it's too bad that it didn't chart higher. It's too bad that it wasn't more of a hit because this was such an awkward time for them. One of the biggest bands in the world would be struggling. Um, and it, it should have been a bigger hit for them. It really should have. It's available on CD uh, if you can find it. But man, if you can get a copy of this thing, pick it up. I found this in like the dollar bin. And I was like, I'm still building up my Temptations collection. So I grabbed it because I haven't heard anything from the, or their Atlantic period. Um, until I got this one and I was just like why was this not a hit album like there's so many good songs Mystic Woman is absolutely fantastic Everybody Love is a classic um, I Wake Up To Me is great I, I Just Don't Know How To Let You Go I mean this album is just full of hits um, it should have been a hit album so um, yeah I'm gonna give this thing an 8 out of 10 I think it's fantastic I think it's one of the best Temptations albums I've ever heard um, yeah David Ruffin's not on it. Eddie Kedricks isn't on it. Dennis Edwards isn't on it. Neither is Paul Williams. Like, some of the original classic guys are not here. But the guys who are here make for an absolutely fantastic listen. So I highly recommend it. 8 out of 10. Um, and that's it. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Giggins. This has been Album Reviews with The Temptations, Bareback, 8 out of 10, uh, Atlantic Records, 1978. What do you guys think of this thing? Have you heard any of their late 70s stuff? And if you have, what do you think? I'd be super curious to know. So... Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.